So the Mary of the Bible is, is one, but the Catholic Mary is a different one because the Mary of the Bible was a very humble servant who uh, God chose to bring Messiah. And then afterwards, she was treated like all the disciples. She was just a follower of Christ all the way to her death. And of course, in history, there has been a lot of falsehoods, a lot of uh, bringing in false information. History has been corrupted. And many will tell you that Mary uh, was assumed into heaven and she didn't taste death because she was sinless. All of that is falsehood. All of that does not come from the Bible, but it comes through the ruling of the popes, the magisterium, and the traditions of the Roman Catholic Church. Now, I want to speak about the messages that the apparitions of the Catholic Mary is given unto everybody. And then I will compare that to the scriptures. And you will see that this is a falsehood. This is false information that is coming through to deceive the multitudes. According to 2 Thessalonians 2, where it says that many will fall. Many will follow falsehood because they did not have a love for the truth. The Bible, I'm telling you right now, the Bible teaches that we are to worship only one God and we worship through Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible says. Jesus Christ, it, the Messiah, it was God manifest in the flesh. And we can worship Jesus because he's God. But we cannot worship anything else or venerate anything else because then we are coming against the word of God and falling into 2 Thessalonians 2, following after a great or delusion that has come upon the world and will continue until the, the moving of Antichrist and then the coming of Jesus Christ to destroy the, the, the empire of the Antichrist. To critically test these manifestations, we will examine those messages that have received full church approval or those messages which carry the imprimatur of the local Catholic bishop. And Medjugorje, though not formally approved, it has been openly affirmed by numerous bishops, cardinals, and the Pope himself. The following represent common messages from the apparition of Mary. Dear children, today I invite you to ask yourself why I am with you this long. I am the mediatrix between you and God. Do not let yourselves be seized by fear or discouragement. Have great confidence in the powerful work of intercession and mediation of your Heavenly Mother. The world is degenerating, so much so that it was necessary for the Father and the Son to send me into the world, among all the peoples, in order to be their advocate and to save them. Never be alone. My Immaculate Heart will be your refuge and the way which will lead you to God. At every moment, you must be just as I would have you be. At every moment, you must do just what I would have you to do. Do not be afraid. I will always be near you. Do not be grieved. I am with all of you, even though you do not see me. I am mother of all of you sinners. I stand here as the co-redemptrix and advocate. Everything should be concentrated on that. Repeat this after me. The new dogma will be the dogma of the co-redemptrix. Until I am acknowledged there where the Most Holy Trinity has willed me to be, I will not be able to exercise my power fully in the maternal work of co-redemption and of the universal mediation of graces. I love you even when you are far away from me and my son. I ask you not to allow my heart to shed tears of blood because of the souls who are being lost through sin. For a long time, I have suffered for you. If I do not want my son to abandon you, 
I am forced to pray to him myself without ceasing. You pay no heed. However much you would do, you could never recompense the pain I have taken for you. I boldly assert that his suffering became my suffering, because his heart was mine. And just as Adam and Eve sold the world for an apple, so in a certain sense, my son and I redeemed the world with one heart. I am she who is related to the Divine Trinity. I am the Virgin of Revelation. My children, I am the door of heaven and the help on earth. There are many other problems. For instance, the apparition even commands her followers to venerate her statues. As mother, I want to tell you that I am here with you, represented by the statue you have here. Each of my statues is a sign of a presence of mine and reminds you of your heavenly mother. Therefore, it must be honored and put in places of greater veneration. You should look with love at every image of your heavenly mother. Contrast this with the Lord's command given in Deuteronomy. Take careful heed to yourselves, for you saw no form when the Lord spoke to you at Horeb out of the midst of the fire, lest you act corruptly and make for yourselves a carved image in the form of any figure, the likeness of male or female. The apparition has also requested shrines be erected in her honor around the globe. I ardently desire a temple built for me here, where I can show and offer all my love, compassion, help, and protection. For I am your merciful mother. I am Mary, the queen of heaven and the queen of angels. Mary is definitely the queen of heaven. She's a mother of God. She's our mother. There's no other woman in this whole world that ever could compare to the Blessed Mother. The apparitions often come in the name or the term the Queen of Heaven. And this is interesting to me in light of the scriptures because in the Old Testament, Jeremiah talked about very clearly the Queen of Heaven as an abomination before God. In the book of Revelation, which is the last book in the Bible, John reveals to us a portion of his vision in that in the last days there will be a wicked woman who will be part of a delusion that will deceive the whole world. And it's in reference to a woman being a queen. Of course, the apparition often refers to herself as the queen. The lady of all nations, who is the bride of the Lord, the queen of the king, who has now received this title from the Lord. She has once again saved the world by her intercession, once more saved it. Jesus Christ is going to glorify her as the queen, and she'll be here, and she'll be recognizable as the queen of everything that God has made, the queen of the universe, the queen of all mankind, the queen of everything that God has created. And she'll be the queen, and she'll be a glorified queen. It, it'll, it won't be any question about who she is. And she will be, She'll be the loving mother of Jesus Christ who has all power. I, together with my auxiliary bishop, Monsignor Pun, approve the title Lady of All Nations and allowed its public veneration. Mary promised in Fatima that her Immaculate Heart would triumph. This triumph will not be achieved with nuclear arms, however, but through the simple hearts of those who suffer and are persecuted, of those who have dedicated themselves wholly to Mary, the Co-Redemptrix. Under the title, Lady and Mother of All Nations, Mary shows us in Amsterdam the way to peace and unity for the church and through the church for the world. As startling as these claims are, the apparition's desire to be declared co-redemptrix may soon be met. When the dogma, 
the last dogma in Marian history has been proclaimed. The Lady of All Nations will give peace, true peace to the world. The nations, however, must say my prayer in union with the Church. They must know that the Lady of All Nations has come as co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and advocate. So be it. The apparition that identifies herself as the Mother of the Eucharist has declared, Speak about the Mother of the Eucharist, because the Mother of the Eucharist closes history. All the messages come from God, and everywhere that I am appearing, I am speaking about the same things. Because through the triumph of the Eucharist, the Mother wants all the churches to be reunited, so that there will be only one church for all the people. The Lady of all nations, bring peace to all the world. Go, Redeemer, ushered by Pope. In other words, the Pope said that the Lady of nations will bring peace to all the world. And the Mother of the Eucharist will close history. All messages come from God, she says. Through the Eucharist, the Mother wants all churches to be united. Only one church for all the people and global peace.